So now I'm gonna share it. All right, so let me start the show and let's do pause. Okay, so we are at Machuk. Is Machuk around? Hi, uh, that's me. Hello. Hello. Oh, um, I love that piece. What did you say? I love that piece. It's so oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So Machuk, I tried to, um, you know, try to find little things about everybody, and I couldn't really find much about you except that you are in London based. Uh, that's correct. Um, I'm in London. I'm from Poland originally. Um, but I live and work in, in London. Um, I haven't been painting for long. Maybe that's why I was uh, put to the mystery. <laughs> well, since this is your first time, what we do, we go through the gallery. So if you want to say a little bit about each piece and what's behind it, uh, feel free to do so. Yeah, a little bit about your painting, a little bit maybe about the process. Um, mm -hmm. And also what is all, always interesting to me as a immigrant myself, uh, if there's any, uh, any things like this in your work, if you uh, are influenced by your hometown or your home country in any way. So this is an oil painting I, uh, I made last year. Uh, it's based on a photo and uh, it's a it's part of a series of silhouettes, uh, sunset silhouettes. Um, it's not really, um, it's not, not really based on any personal experience or anything like that. It was, um, it was just a, just a practice, really. Um, just to give the viewer a sense of being outdoors in nature and, um, and trying to reproduce the, the colors of the sunset. Mm. This one falls more into the pinks, but uh, I have um, all the ranges as well. Um, I think that was the, um, the one that people like most. That's why I picked this one. Uh, it was in an exhibition last year in London, online exhibition, so I thought I would um, reintroduce it to, to you on this occasion. Okay. Thank you. Well, let me go to your next one. Okay. Takes a little bit to watch out. There we go. Oh. All right. So we have uh, this one, and let me go to the next one too, and we can come maybe back that day. Um, people see it like your next one too. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so these are all your paintings as well. Um, and they're also part of, of a series. Um, I have a series of paintings um, of those um, bowls, like sea of, sea of bowls of different colors, and those random body parts uh, poking through uh, the surface. Um, I like surreal art a lot, uh, and it's meant to give you a sense of um, unease, I, I suppose, um, of sense of enigma. Um, but again, it's not based on anything personal. <laughs> uh, the point was to produce something a little bit spooky, I think. Um, and they're quite well received, so um, I thought I would submit this one. And I think it goes well with the Aberglaube theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we thought so too. Um, let's go to the next one too. I also like really, uh, especially in this one, I really like the use of color. You, uh, I like radiant colors. I like contrasting different colors. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really into myself. I'm not really into making um, top down yeah, paintings. Um, I like vibrant colors and, and, and shapes. 
uh, and I like painting on a big format, so um, pieces that stand out in this way. Nice, nice relationship. Thank you. Yeah. So, are you using an airbrush? What are you doing? Is it? It's oils, right? Oils. It's it's oils. That's right. Okay. Uh, yeah. It has a satin, real beautiful satin kind of finish. Thank you. I, I can see now that it's not as bright as it is in real life. I think it's the yeah. it's the quality of the photo, um, but it's, oh, okay. it's much more vibrant in, in real life. Mm -hmm. More hard edge. Now you can see the texture too. You know, it's just. Um... It's more glossy in real life because I use a lot of linseed oil um, <laughs> finishing to just give it that gloss and, and that texture. Cool. Hey, yeah, a very mysterious quality to it you know, with the eyes um, drawing you in. I wanted to see more. I wanted to find out what, like the saying goes, uh, um, well, it's something about the, you know, the mysteries in the eyes, eyes of the beholder. So this one, you know, give me that sense of just mysterious. Mm. Nice. Thank you. That was my point. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Larry Cavani's up next. Okay. Hold on one moment. Okay, and here we go. Let me see. Ready? I have Larry here, and I was actually uh, uh, snooping around a little bit on everybody. So uh, there was one thing what actually thought was um, interesting to me that you said at one point, and I want to ask you if you still do this, that you actually made a, point, a, a painting every day. Yes, I've done it since 2012. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's Every amazing. Day. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and also working, you know, full time as a uh, faculty member at the same time. But now I'm retired. I'm even making more. But yeah, I started now primarily, you know, I started off with my getting my MFA in performance art, uh, social intervention kind of art, and then uh, videotaping the art and then realizing that there's a paradox in videotaping something live and editing and so forth. And then at long at the same time, I was curating shows in our garage. And uh, the last show we had this guy turn the garage into a uh, uh, art gym where people could stop off and make some art before they go home. And, and he talked me into making a painting and I just started making it that day and, and then didn't stop. And the idea of the social media is the idea of this immediate audience that was getting performance art. So I was just like, okay, this is, I'm not isolated. I'm, I'll make and post and along the way I've been selling work quite frequently on social media too so yeah that's how it started it's very interesting because there's a certain art practice you know like it doesn't matter you know what kind of art you do but there's a thing where you should work on something every day or they actually recommend it that you get like oh, oh god Yes, absolutely. Especially in painting, because you're establishing some kind of dialogue. You know, it's so immediate too, but you and it, which helps with establishing a dialogue ongoing. You know, mm -hmm. as you evolve. So yes. Yeah, I can see this that it's almost like your uh, uh, journal. You know, writer's journal or whatever. It is. It is. Absolutely. Actually, actually, doing that is also extended into poetry for me mm -hmm. as well. At this point, where there each painting has an extended title. This one has the extended poem that goes to it as well. Yeah. This is really with most artists when you look at them too, especially when they're, you know, a little bit older than two, they venture into other arts uh, oh, yeah. to, to express themselves or maybe to, um, you know, combine something what was missing before. Well, I think if you're consistent, the extension is just the extension of a dialogue. It's not mm -hmm. just it's not eclectic as all that. There's there's these links. You don't you know randomly jump into something else if there's not a link from the, the, the past. Mm -hmm. If you're consistent with it, that's the way it is. Me, you know, I'm not. Experimentation always finds its way within the lineage of my conversation of the work. 
So another question is with this uh, one painting a day, because for example, I'm trying to write every day and I know I'm not sharing that. Do you share every painting you do a day? Or yes, you... yes, that's my uh, strategy on a professional level of making money uh, to sustain that, you know, is the idea that I share it every day uh, on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and on a consistent basis based on, you know, sales, when somebody comments, I'll just, you know, message that I can make them a deal on it. And the one thing leads to another and it becomes more personalized and also more affordable for the buyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so great. it's, it's a little more independence than mm -hmm. usual. Yeah. I just want I just want to say, Larry, that I, this actually may be my favorite piece in the show. Um, Thank even you. That, that's a hard. It's hard to pick that, but this to me, this is the most wonderfully disturbing piece in the show, and I don't mean that in a negative way because it's the colors are just so wonderful, but to me, it's so it's so much. Uh, relevant to the theme of this show um, because it's very supernatural to me. Yeah, um, yeah. And I love the colors. They're just so perfect. Well, you know, uh, I'm so attracted to this whole curatorial process that these folks are doing, you know, the sense of, a, you know, ideas foremost in terms of wanting to be associated with something. And their ideas are just great. And I love their curation of the work. And you know, and it just extends my understanding of what's going on, you know, uh, more than just being in any gallery. Uh, but yeah, you know, the uh, I, when I started this dog thing, uh, it was more of a practice of looking at figures in motion, particularly crows and dogs and, and jackrabbits, things like that. And uh, this was a dog I just kind of encapsulated within its motion, staged it. And then, you know, after the fact, I had a conversation with Eugene about the, the dog, black dog myth, you know, in terms of uh, aggression or melancholy or depression or bad mm. luck. And then it was just like, wow, this is crazy. And then it put me into another direction of researching this idea. And uh, not, in retrospect, you think about art history, especially in Germany and German expressionism, it was the idea of melancholy calling and depression, that idea of the macabre too that would spring people in forth into making work just as a response, as a, a counter response to the, the, the negativity. And, uh, but this also full circle is the idea of a bear, a dog I had, which I wrote a poem about, his name was Bear. Back in the day when I was living in Asheville, North Carolina, my wife, uh, I came home and, and there was this, I swear to God, at first I saw it on the couch and I was thinking, oh my God, you've picked up a bear cub. You know, because it was this round headed, short legged, you know, little pup. And I'm like, first thing I thought was a bear cub. And it grew up to be this part corgi, part child, chow dog that's like a little tank and black. And uh, so it full circle within the bad luck thing. And I'm not making this up, but he inevitably ended up dying of a heat stroke, which is, was a lot of bad luck for all of us. Oh, it's full circle, but I've also I've done a series of other black dogs since then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, thank you, Larry. Um, thank you. Let's go to the next. All right. I think we are having John up. And hold on, John. John showed with us a few times already. John also is uh, recently a new member of TAG Gallery. Um, I'm quoting John here because I snooped around with you too. Uh, he said, in my art I explore the mystery of why I find some men so beautiful and so intriguing. I use found images from the internet store of gay pornography and combine them with my own photographs to articulate a relationship with those men. I consider the work post photography in that I'm making a new photograph that is specific to my internal point of view. Well, thank you, Connie. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> so and I, I just wanna say something really quick about uh, post photography. I love that word. I love that whole concept. And mm -hmm. part, of, uh, part of what I'm doing is I use a lot of photographs and my processes that I'm developing them in my mind. 
Um, so each one of these things, like this photograph that we're looking at right now, this is, I just took my phone and waved it around um, huh. on the city um, at night to get oh. those like that. And, um, you know, I took little pieces of the lights and, you know, put them together and where I wanted them to be. Um, I, I, I submitted this piece because I thought it had a sense of mystery and intrigue to it. Yeah, wow, what a process, that's great. And there are usually, there are very many layered. You know, I, I usually yeah. use, you know, several photographs and try and put them together in a way that makes kind of sense in my own mind's eye. What a great way to like, paint, it's great. Thank you. Let's go to the next one too. Uh... Okay, there we go. I love this one, by the way, John. I really, really do. Oh, thank you. I, you know, this one again. Um, the 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 man in the photograph is, you know, um, someone I grabbed from the internet. But the picture is out my window, and it's a a picture of uh, downtown LA with the palm trees. Like I kind of really like that. And then I found the wings and you know, work them into, into the picture because um, angels are, I love angels. I, I do a lot of, I do a lot of things with angel wings. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Same process. Same process, yes. And again, <laughs> That's each correct. one of those wings, the wings, I also um, stole them off of the internet as well, but hmm. then did my own process with them to make them look the way that they do. So John, you can apply you can apply movement to your technology that gives you visual effects. Yes, um, yeah, and you know, I mean, part of a part of what I like about my process too is um, I have to find the things that I want to put together. You know what I mean? And these wings took me these wings took me forever to find, mm -hmm. you know, and then there, it's only one wing, you know, so I oh. had to, you know, do the one wing and then reverse it, you know, and, and then put it together behind him and then figure out, well, where would the wings really come out of the shoulder, right? Um, I, that's all part of, you know, that's all part of the process for me. Oh. Um. Another question, John, because you said you use your own photographs and, you know, images from the internet. Have you ever tried, like, have you ever, like, let's say you have uh, the, the guy in the, in the foreground, have you done a portraiture of, uh, uh, like, a person and then used all your, I mean, all your photographs? Um, yes, I have done, um, I, well, it's interesting. I have taken, I, I have one or two models that I have taken a photograph of and then done the same process with. Um, and then I also, there is a young French um, guy, Louis, um, who sends me photographs of himself and okay. allows me to use them. And I really enjoy working. I, I've, I have like probably six or seven pieces now that use him as the basis for my ideas. Okay, that's interesting. Because I was like thinking if you have something in your mind, it might be even easier if you have like a model and you can, you know, form what you actually want stage and then combine the images, you know? Um, yeah, but part of my, you know, I mean, part of my process too is kind of, um, is, is like really looking at what calls to me. Okay. Um, and that that is part of um because I can't you I can't use everything oh I'll just um well next time we go back to group view I'll I have two big pieces behind me that I just got framed that are you know uh, four feet in size and I love working at that size of things mm -hmm. just things look really different mm -hmm. uh, when they're big. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, interesting to me because I am as well a photographer and uh, 
the process for me there is a there is it's all it's very similar actually but what i do is i i seek things that i am attracted to but i reinvent them mm, right yes and i love your i love your photographs i've you know looked at a lot of a, a lot of your work um and you know, I get your work is very staged, and I don't mean that. Or I don't mean that artificially, but it's very, it's very composed. If if that makes any sense. Yes, it does. That's part of what I'm trying to do too. It's the whole thing is about what composition do I want to make? Yeah, it's a, it's a control thing. What you want to do? Yeah, I understand. And it doesn't always work. It doesn't <laughs> always work. You're right. You're really right. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, John. Thank you for sharing. It was lovely. Um, who is next? Uh, Robin. Robin. Hold on. I have something about Robin, too. Where is Robin? Robin, Robin, Robin. Here we go. Robin. That's right. You are you are in LA based now. I think you were born in San Francisco. Is this correct? That's correct. Yeah, and you're in LA now. Uh, I saw. I looked through your website. You have very interesting um, uh, paintings there. I put them both together because you submitted this as a uh, as one piece. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you guys hear Robin? I cannot hear Robin very well. Can you uh, turn up? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. Yes, I can too. Okay, good, good, good. Then it's maybe just my end. Okay, so um, do you do you want to talk a little bit about your process? Uh, maybe where you get your ideas from too. Um, I did this um, actually several years ago, and um, the series was looking at religion and um, science and how religion is a rejection of science and, uh, hmm. and, and that and it plays into the superstition. And um, in this case, um, on, on the left is evolution and then you're getting into um, single cell organisms all the way down to the absurdness of a little cherub guy down at the bottom. And um, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be um, make you make you wonder what's going on. But that is the idea of showing the process of, of evolution. And I have a confession to make. If you look at my lamprey eel, I actually, um, when I found out that this is going to be in the show, I went in and I redid the lamprey eel. So if you look at the photo of my first one, you're going to notice that it's a little bit different. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to add some teeth in there and make it look a little more vicious. Um, mm. So again, it's a play on um, the absurdity of, of, um, of mythology, how it's mixed with religion. And, um, and, and a statement on that. Um, again, I always have a lot of blue, water is life. Um, any questions on that? <laughs> to me, it kind of has a slight Bosch feel to it too, at least in this diptych. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I definitely wanted a Baroque feel. Um, yeah. It's also, they're also done on sheet metal and um, oh. which huh. was really interesting. The oils act like acrylics on sheet metal. It, it just absorbs in. And um, so ironic, I did these when I was in a residency in Berlin. So it all, uh, it fits with your German theme too. And <laughs> um, that was really, I, I found these two pieces of sheet metal and I decided to see what would happen. Um, on the second one is de-evolution, and that gets even more into a, I, I think, more of a harsher statement of, um, of the things that, I'm not going to say Christianity, um, because I think this is, has to do with all religions, but how it embraces mythology, and it makes it, and it, makes it part of, you know, belief. 
And in this case, we have a little bit of Lita and the Swan in too. Um, mm. So while this one's talking more about the fantasy and more environmental and more of a evolutionary scheme, the other one is um, a little bit harsher theme looking at the beginning of life and actually okay. going um, almost the opposite direction as the first. I think you've really exercised spatial understanding with this because there's so much, you know, uh, push and pull in the foreground and then you offer up nature and the sea and all these other spaces to counter it that gives you that kind of relief, you know. So yeah, I think just uh, technically it's beautiful too, yeah. That's about it. Yeah, when we looked at the at your art, like Eugene and me, we were, thought it was very, very fitting for the um, the theme of <laughs> and uh, seeing them both next to each other, it's uh, it's just really, really beautiful. Um, I really like them next to each other as well. They work really well as a pair. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the next. I think it's Alejandro, is this correct? Yes, there we Hello. go. My from, um, well, you're living in Germany now, but uh, mm -hmm. originally, where were you from actually? Are you Italian, right? Yes, it is, I'm Italian, yes, it is. So how come an Italian in Germany, what is happening here? <laughs> here, in this, this image you mean, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so um, um, yes, it's a, it's a very interesting thing that uh, Robin said this uh, superstition about the religion, but about this um, uh, this uh, title of this uh, exhibition, I um, understood and, and uh, discovered that uh, superstition is something very um, that doesn't is very universal people that are religious or not, they are scientists or not, they live in little strange things. They are, they are a lot and very different. Black cats, uh, the iron, uh, the, the, the 13 or the 15, uh, the list is very longer. And uh, I, am, I was always fascinated about this superstition about the mirror. Mm -hmm. Because, um, as the title say, I make um, a connection between um, the superstition of the mirror and the legend of N Narciso. Because Narciso look herself in, not in a mirror, but in a lake, like a mirror, and then death. And the people believe that when a mirror is broken in Europe, I mean, it's all over the world. <laughs> Uh, you will have seven years of uh, fortune, of terrible things. But when I meet in this, when uh, I broke on a mirror accidentally, or I go, an example, this mirror was in an exhibition um, to see uh, images or the image of my face in a lot of little broken pieces make something very fascinating to me is like a uh, multiplication of uh, uh, the identity of the images of myself. And obviously when you look at yourself in a mirror, it's a little bit like to be like Narciso that you love yourself and you, <laughs> you like to see your, your face, you're, you're, um, you're happy. In this photo, I was in this exhibition, it was a very good night. And I see in my face something very, um, the happiness. And I see this happiness in these fear frames and then uh, become this idea. Mm. And I discovered that uh, these two, uh, in appearance, Italy and Germany are very different country, but for a lot of things, they are so similar. And the superstition is one of this. I met here in Italy, a lot of kind of superstition people, 
that they are they believe or not believe <laughs> in the same things. And the mirror is one of this. A lot hmm. of people are very scared to break a mirror. I was very completely surprised because when you are uh, a teenager, you can't believe in these things. But when you are um, no, a little bit older, like me, <laughs> um, it's very difficult to, to believe these things, but they are very fascinating. I mean, this legend for me is very fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting how you place the image, you know? Mm, yeah, it was very... How did you do this, Alessandro? I'm interested because it almost looks like you assembled real mirror pieces. Yes. It is a real, it is, um, it was too fortunate. It was really a mirror broken. And I made this photo. It was, um, I don't know how, the light or this night uh, or the point of view recreate this image and make a simple photo with my camera. Oh, interesting. Mm. And this was for the very amazing for me too that with a very simple, but a very high concentration moment, I can get this image very, I find it very um, expressive and beautiful. Thank you. And this is. <laughs> Bravo. And yeah, so to close this, uh, this conversation, I remember that, uh, yes, to, to broken a mirror in Italy, it's very, a very um, uh, horrible uh, science that this, this, this mythology starts from the, the old Rome uh, Imperium. It was in, become here this uh, this legend of this story, mm. and that's it. Yes, to close my <laughs> conversation about it. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. What uh, what, what town are you from in Italy? Mm -hmm. Where are you from yeah. in Italy? So uh, I was born in Naples. My my father is from Bologna. And I grew up in Rome, okay. and I was in this uh, this three city. So I am a, a, this this mix of these three cities. If it is like, three, I expect. Yeah, two of my favorite city. I love Naples. Napoli is just amazing. Yes, no. it is a very special, incredible city. Yes, it's very anarchic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you and Dalila had your honeymoon, wasn't it? We, we, ha we had a honeymoon there. We went to uh, Ischia. Ischia was like the highlight of our tour, actually. We didn't want to do Capri because it was, there was so many tourists. So we did Ischia a few days and it was just lovely. It was amazing. Yes, in my living a part of my family is uh, is in the center of the city, of the center of Naples. The part where it's in front of Ischia, the coast. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ischia is a really a very wonderful place, and it's the favorite one of Angela Merkel. Just to. Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, she loves yeah. Ischia. But uh, yeah. going going back to Arbogla, but there's a, a lot of volcano uh, grounds and all the hot springs of Ischia. A lot of what? Sorry. Uh, all the hot springs and the volcano, the the the. Yeah, it is. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, it's a very special place. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you. Let's so go you, next. You're welcome. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm finished. Thank you. Oh. Next up is uh, our own Eugene. Um, Eugene is uh, co-owner from Quince House Rosie. Uh, you, you guys know that he's an amazing artist. He's an amazing human. He just had his birthday last week. Happy birthday again. Ah, uh, danke, Liebchen. <laughs> and he's also not just an amazing artist, he's also an amazing activist. Um, so there's, uh, <clears throat> Eugene does a lot of things and we still have to have this birthday drink soon because we both got our shots, so we're going to wait a little hey. bit. Thank you, Eugene, for this. Well, I'm gotten a himmel of 48. Can you believe that? <laughs> it happened. <I> <laughs> God in him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eugene, you're up. Okay, well, um, these three pieces were, uh, I just did new ones for an exhibition that was at 
gallery and I thought I'd share them with you guys here, but they're probably my three favorite pieces and it ended up being that these uh, three uh, were the last three I did. And uh, it was a combination of geometrics and abstract. And it was based on an old painting I had a long time ago, or at least the idea of it was there, uh, which was Achilles or Achilles. And, uh, uh, but I did it a little bit differently and I used graphite on these and spray paint. Uh, this first one here kind of named itself when I got done with it, I named it Aries after the God of War. And to me, it has a very warlike feel to it. Mm -hmm. You want me to go to the next one? Uh, yeah. Let's see the next one. Uh, uh, this one and the next one, uh, this one, the blue one is Blaue Hexe, which is German for Blue Witch. And the uh, one after that is Rota Hexe, which is, did I pronounce the T right? Yes, you could. <laughs> which is uh, Red Witch. And to me, uh, these do have a superstitious feel, a lot of feeling and uh, I, I love how it kind of pulls you back into the piece and it feels like the metallics are floating on top of it and does have a sense of magic and maybe a little touch of sinister to it. Mm -hmm. I love the colors, Eugene. I really have to say they really, really draw me yeah. all of them. I love the depth. Yeah, they turned out really good that way. And well, what I do on a lot of my pieces is I will paint them entirely black. And then I will paint, uh, it was another artist that taught me to do that. And then I will paint white in certain parts of it. So when I'm painting color over it, uh, the black will pull where whatever the co color over it is, will pull it back and then the white will push it forward. And on some cool. of them where I left it a little bit where it pushes through that way. Cool tension. Yeah, that's a really good technique. And I saw you doing this. I, I like when you do your little posts, you know, Instagram too, uh, when you show like your technique, you know, what you're thinking, what you're doing, what the first is. And you work on some, most of the time I see you actually working on more than one piece at the time. I usually work about three at the same time because being an adhd -er, I don't have the uh, patience to just sit and let one dry. <laughs> but I, <laughs> like I'll, do different uh, layers, so to speak, and let it dry overnight. But I like to go from one to another and uh, somehow they kind of, the three that I'm working on always tie into each other too. But yeah, it's about three that I usually work on at the same time. Because you know, when you're in that creative mode, you just want to keep going. Yes, absolutely. And those, like you said already, those three pieces were also, um part of your solo exhibit at Tag Gallery. Yes. All right. Should we go next? Yeah. All right, let's go next. And I think it would be you, my dear. Oh, it really is. So <laughs> this is a really good example of what John and me talked about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have a vision in your, in your head and you try to create something and uh, for a superstition, I actually shot specifically for this. Uh, and I had uh, Eugene, I had your cards involved. I had smoke, I had all these things and it just didn't work out. It just did not like what came out. And I tried really hard and it was just not what I wanted. And then <clears throat> in the end, we just played around a little bit. The Dalila is really into fairies. So we created this actually as a fairy light, catching some fairy lights. And uh, I just love the image uh, as itself. Uh, it's a little bit dark for fairies, but I actually like the contrast too. Well, and um, it's an amazing subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your, your wife and what she, what she puts out there and her energy, capture it on film. That's what I love about it. Yeah, the good thing is too, she's always, I just have to say like, hey, I have this and this vision. I want to do this and she's like okay i don't understand the word what do you want me to wear what do you want me to do and then we just Perfect. go and play and it's it's really great it's fantastic because sometimes i remember in the beginning uh we played but then um which is not in the beginning but it's still really great as uh 
you just do whatever you want to do and then she gets in this playful mood and plays herself and there was a lot of times that the end outcome was actually more formed with what she was playing what what, what I, I wasn't even thinking of it you know so that's always um really nice and I, she, love, I love the lighting in this piece is really and i'm looking you know i mean the first thing you obviously notice is the sparkler mm -hmm. in the front but i'm looking at the incredible lighting on her body and on her clothes and the way her breasts are highlighted it's really really the lighting is just so yeah, great stunning. so mm -hmm. interesting and deep you know it really gives the piece like so much dimension mm -hmm. thank you yeah, we, we created it. In, I'm sorry. I love how you capture uh, uh, intensity in her eyes. Uh, you come across looking through her, she's looking at the, the sparkle of things in her hand. So mm -hmm. intense. I mean, it, it just grabs you. Oh. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, next one is actually uh, my wife again. Oh. <laughs> There we go. She is actually, uh, there is um, a goddess of water and there's uh, many, many names for her. Um, this is the Yimayaya and we have actually sculptures at our house too. She's very drawn to it. We actually all very drawn to water. Um, finding peace, we go when we meditate, we go to water. So this is just an extent of uh, what she uh, uh, or we all actually, when we want to find peace, when we want to uh, just go in a, in a, in a certain space, we, we always seek to go actually to the beach to water. And uh, this was just uh, a really happy accident too, that the sunset, it was just so gorgeous. And the water, it was just, it was just so beautiful. See, it's almost like purple over there. It was just... Uh, for sure intensified by me, um, but also- I was going to ask you that, if you did anything to bring out the colors in these pieces. I actually did, and I had to do a, a little bit more to highlight her her face a little bit more because it was a little bit more too dark. Um, mm. I was actually thinking about leaving it almost like as, as a silhouette at first, but then I decided actually to show her face a little bit more. No, I like it that way. Yeah, me too. It's uh, just very peaceful to me too. And then the next one is uh, uh, the same beach. It's our kid um, who, who is very into Poseidon, uh, the uh, not so nice uh, guy. <laughs> uh, but um, and I was always wondering what this, what the, what the combination there is. But uh, uh, Poseidon is like the god of the sea and the earthquakes and storms, and uh, there must be an attraction with Phoenix and with this as well. And uh, it's the same beach, it's the same sunset, and uh, this was. I just love the combination of the water, the light, the colors, and also, you know, when you see the hair and the dress, it's just all very, very beautiful to me. And. Now, is this also your wife? Because it really looks like a different person. That is not my wife. This is our kid. This is Phoenix. Oh, okay. So now it all makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> well, interesting, Connie, is at least from me for knowing Delila and Phoenix, like both pictures, like the, the one with Delila captures her energy and feeling and knowing Phoenix, this one, it, it's like, even though it's the same beach, it's distinctly different and you capture Phoenix's feel in it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it's more a masculine feeling in the second one than in the first, yeah. Thank you guys. Let's do next. Who is on next? Oh, there we go. Who? Sean, stuff I love, but I don't think he's with us today. Okay. Okay, so um, he is, yeah. So let's let's just go to his next one too. I like his art too. Um, I know I wrote really this. Yeah, me too. It's too bad he's not here. Uh, would have liked to. Oh, uh, fun! It's a lot of fun. Yeah, really fun. Yeah. He he works a lot with nudes too. So. Um, yeah. 
And they're all sculptural looking. Yeah. Marcina, is Marcina here? Uh, no. Okay. It's a nice so one. Marcina is, would be interesting too. She is actually uh, from Poland and immigrated to the United States in 90. So, um, but uh, I think it was the only of her. Let's do the next one. Oh, no, we have three of hers. That's right. Um, this middle, <laughs> just fantastic. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the bird poop. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I'm going to like their burrows on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's very good, actually. Yes. Wow. Is that like a rat or what is that? Looks like a bear to me. It looks a bear to me too, yeah. Okay. Interesting texture. Yeah. Wow. In a very kind of simplified way, it's really communicated the animal. Nice. <laughs> and that's, is that a lot of surface on that, you think? Or is that just, uh, what is that made of? What's it painted with? Uh, I'm not sure. Do you yeah. have any more information? Uh, oh. you Hold on, I can look it up. I can bring up, uh, uh, let's see. One second here. Yeah. She's uh, actually known for using a lot of uh, textures and techniques, very different things. Yeah. Uh, but this specific one. I'm gonna bring it in now. So for this one. Oh, it's just all, it's all acrylic on canvas. Huh. But whatever she did with it, like uh, I really like the textures and the layering for it. Mm -hmm. Totally. It's really beautiful. It's interesting. All right. Okay, and let's see who's next. What did you say, Eugene? Oh, I said our next one's Enzo Mara. He's not with us today either. Enzo's not. That's too bad because uh, yeah. I really I wanted to ask these. him about these things. I put them both uh, close together. Um, yeah, he is. Hold on. London. So he's London based as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're really dynamic. I love them together too. And uh, so, my favorite the website piece says too that uh, the, the use of texture, especially texture, mm -hmm. is very of big importance to him. So it looks yeah. like there is some cutouts maybe on canvas. Um, yeah, so it looks like cutouts. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, next. Okay, who is next? Daniela Silverman. Is Daniela here with us? Oh, this one I'm sad for because I wanted to know the stuff behind these sculptures. Yeah, me too. The, we, we both thought they were really interesting. We wanted to know a little bit more, but Daniela is, uh, she's actually LA based. So she is a, lives in Eagle Rock, so has a studio there, uh, but uh, all right, let's go next. Other Ooh, that's amazing. Wow. So. Well, there's a third one. Oh, I thought there was. No, I think we just had this two for her. Okay, Joelle, is Joelle with us? Uh, we do not have Joelle, but I like right. pieces. Okay, let's do next. It looks really interesting with the textures too, with the layers. Um, Almost looks like a Cocteau Twins album cover. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The thing I get from these, I, I really think they're really interesting too, but I see myself Earth. standing on a cliff in Malibu and yeah. looking down into mm -hmm. the like tide pools. Absolutely, I can see that too. Yeah. All right, next we have... Nico, who's shown with us before, but I actually uh, talked to her on Instagram earlier. She's on a plane coming back to the U.S. So okay, okay. Yeah, Nico also uh, lives in uh, Germany, 
and always combines actually photographs with uh, other uh, with paint or with you know other techniques. So it's yeah, wonderful. Met her before and it was it was wonderful. We like really like her work too. That's specific. I would have liked to ask her more about it, but um, we'll see. And this is the other one. Oh. Hmm. That's the text. Mm -hmm. Yes, can anybody make out the words? Or, or am I just, are they, they are words, right? Yeah. I fine. just, am I just, you know, um, assuming or imagining that they're words? They look like words. It looks like sentences. I think there are, I know she uses a lot of text in her work, so it probably is manipulated. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, let's go next. Michelle Manteau, who we do not have with us, which is another one I would have liked to ask. What yeah, me too. Like this one, it's just so haunting. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me almost of a Francis Bacon. Yep. <laughs> All right, that's the next one. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. Is this, is this, so this is the same artist? Yes. Same artist, and this one is called Instant Animal. Oh my God. It's like, a, it reminds me of the Sar twins and also Bacon and, <laughs> and oh my God, who else? It's, that's bizarre. It's great. It's a photograph, right? Um, I think he combines photography with, with, with other things, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so. hmm. All right, let's go next. Our next one, I believe we do have Mark John O'Rourke. Is Mark here? Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. You can hear me OK, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Mark is from Ireland. Yes. Yes, indeed. From and Dublin I, City. Yeah. I wanted to quote you because I really uh, love actually what you had on your website. You said, um, oh. I wish to communicate and relate, relate my experience as a human being. I do not want to impose any opinion on the viewer. Rather, I wish for them to establish a personal relation to what is expressed in the object that they perceive. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Did I say that? <laughs> you must so have good. somebody who did your website. <laughs> if not, you can use it. <laughs> That's right. I can, I can send it to you if you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of a lot of the time people kind of reference objects, things, and stuff in the paintings, and you know that's wonderful. I really do. Uh, but they ask me then, is it this or is it that? And it's like, well, no, it's not. It's kind of you know, it's open to, it's open to the viewer. It's it's the viewer's experience, really. You know, um, I think by the time I finish painting them. It's done, and after that, then it's a, it's a different communication, a different relationship, if you like, you know. Mm -hmm. So I so, feel like because as an abstract artist, what I love most of all is is what v the viewer gets out of it and sees in it, and it's mm -hmm. different person. Yeah, it's wonderful that the many different variants of experience you can have from people when they talk about looking at work you know, they can experience many many different things and you know, different human emotions and you know and as i said i think i'm trying to express my, my understanding as a human you know in in the process of, of painting with the eyes yeah, yeah. As well I, as I, I would say mark i think in there's so much technique in this that um how do i want to say this it it creates the possibility of being able to read your own vision in it. And part mm. of that, the way that you, the colors that you use, and the, I see a lot of technique in this and I really, I really like it. And it does give, it gives the viewer the freedom to kind of create their own idea of what's going on there. Yeah, 
yeah, absolutely. I mean, this series of paintings were inspired, if you like, around the green Tara in the, the Buddhist tradition. It's a feminine mm. Buddha, the female Buddha, and mm. she's seen as a liberator of anxiety, which I thought was wonderful. Like, you know, this deity that jumps into action and removes everyone's anxiety. And uh, the Ture Soha is a kind of an element of that mantra. It's like a secret mantra she has. And if you say the magic words, your anxiety transforms into like uh, beautiful yeah. compassion and love. It's gorgeous. It's a lovely, uh, lovely um, tradition they have. You know, and the, the Tibetan tradition, I believe it comes from. So the colors, I think kind of for me, were around looking at the tankas, the traditional Tibetan tankas, kind of looking at the elements and the tones that we had there. If anything, that's from what I was doing at the time. Um, otherwise I just numbered them <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh, the, this particular series I think there's about 15 of them um, this particular series goes around that I felt that that's what was going on at that time, you know, acknowledging that understanding if you like you know? um, so yeah it was really nice to be selected for the show I really appreciate it, you're very kind thank you very much for that you know? and, um, I'm not getting much um appreciation over here in, in northern europe <laughs> but, uh, yeah yeah well thank you thank you for submitting we really appreciate your art no problem. No problem at all. yeah all right guys let's go next who is next candace, candace. But... oh they're gorgeous and she's not with us too we'll have to slap her later we do have to slap her later. <laughs> so Candace has also started out as a photographer. Uh, she's also a creative director. Uh, I actually wanted to ask her if she still has time to photograph, but obviously she does, uh, which is great. Uh, we were actually in a few shows together with Eugene and Candace. Uh, we did um, one of the, what was, what was the, what was the theater thing we did? What was that? The theater, we did like a, there was a, a play and we submitted art for it too. Oh, I went to that. I saw that show. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. In West Hollywood, right? By um, kind of close to the, the, Vill you know, the Gay and Lesbian Center Village. Yeah, it was yeah. right next to it. Yeah, it was like on the corner of this little theater. There. Right. Yeah. I forgot what it was, but it was fun. That was really, really nice. So that's her first one, and then she submitted another one. So it's like a series uh, that's, uh, yeah, the use of the light with the jails and everything is really, really beautiful here. Okay, then let's move on. We have now Eric Sanders, who is not with us too, right? Ah, uh, correct. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Eric combines like painting and photography as well uh, sometimes, but um, yeah, too bad you cannot talk about it. That would be would be it would have been interesting. How about these two? <laughs> yeah, I was actually looking forward to it. I was like, what? Tell me. Yeah. So, but um, well, we see the monkeys down there, and um, let's just go. Let's just move on to the next one. Um, I, I, I always like his use of color as well speaks to me as well. I know this almost looks, you know, like the photographs when you move it quick and it has a blur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what it feels like to me. Yeah. It's like they have a roller coaster or something too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see who's next. There we go. And we know we have Adeola here. Um, I was poking around you a little bit too, uh, a little bit more, because we had you in a few of our shows already, every, always really, really beautiful art. And um, I had no idea that uh, uh, some of your art actually has been in really big um, TV shows like Grey's Anatomy, Blackish. And then the latest I saw is uh, Bob Hart Abishola. And um, I, um, I actually have a friend who is a writer on this show. So that was like, yay, I'm really happy about that. Uh, are, you, are you still with us? Yes, I'm here. I yeah. can, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just, 
having you uh, your talk for us. <laughs> so you want me to go ahead now? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so thank you. Uh, at the beginning, you, it started, I'm going to move it closer because sometimes I'm in my studio and then the audio gets kind of uh, disjointed when it's too far away from me. So that's what you can hear. Okay. Um, congratulations on your um, um, winning the competition, uh, Connie. I wanted to say that before I forget. Uh, that you, you had a, a, a photography exhibition or context that you that you were selected. So congratulations on that. Okay, these two, pieces, <laughs> these two pieces are uh, I did uh, part of a series um, that has to do, um, it was influenced by a visit to Sedona. Well, we used to go to Sedona a whole lot. And one of the things that Sedona, it's very, um, famous for it's the vortex and the energy and, and the spirits. So uh, after several visits, uh, I did a series of painting and this was based on, on that of uh, the energy and the vortex and the spirits uh, that I felt. Uh, we uh, took a uh, hiking tour to this uh, place in Sedona that's supposed to be the Indians lived many years, many, many, many thousands of years ago, and we took a hike down. And the, the this community was built against the rock formation. And looking down, you could feel their spirits in there because we saw a lot of the things that was used are still in there, the ruins and, and stuff. So I had this sense of feeling the presence of those people that lived in there. Uh, so came back and did this uh, series uh, called on, um, on 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 what I personally experienced going to to uh, to visit that location, and that that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's a it's a really really beautiful space uh, uh, in Arizona. That's Sedona is just yeah. If you guys have not been, you should really go. You can actually. You can actually mm -hmm. feel it when you're there. Yes. Well, and the yes. color texture you have in these pieces, I, I really like, and it, it has an energy feel to it, the way mm -hmm. you it. It makes me happy when I see these colors too. It just makes you feel better just looking at it. Yes, I really, um, to me, they're almost like a landscape in a way that I'm looking at what's beneath the surface, like what's under the ground and what is creating the life that is above. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I, I see yeah, it yeah. As a cross section. Oh yes, it does. It, it's really interesting. I'm not very good with uh, really vocalizing some, you know, a, a lot of my ideas out, but what you said is exactly how I felt. So we took the hike, like I was saying, down to, this uh, 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 place that this was ancient site, uh, more or less. And we had to hike this narrow path to get there. We were led by the docent from the museum. And when you get up there, you see the valley looking the landscape and you're mm -hmm. looking down. And, and then they, we were told the stories of how the people live, that lived up here, how they look at the valley, out the scenes and you can see they also, you really, I'm glad that you felt it because that's exactly the experience that I had and coming back from that experience, it's this. And then you, you look into that this, that people actually lived here and how they navigate this, this space and, and, and this space that's encased in, in that space at that time, as we look down and so much of it, it's what I came back with and then did the series. Interesting. They're beautiful. I really get that. Mm -hmm. They're really beautiful. Thank you. I'm so happy that that translation or you you're able to pick up the energy and feel that effect yeah. of that. Okay, let's do next. Yeah, our last one we have Stephen Archer, but he messaged me too and said he couldn't be with us. He's actually a musician with the band Ego Likeness, but also does a lot of paintings and recently illustrated, uh, which I bought. I really like it. It's uh, 
uh, illustrated Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Mask of the Red Death. Hmm. Yeah, and it would have been interesting to have him here to um, talk a little bit about that. He, he wanted to, uh, he'll be able to relate to this. He just got his second shot of Moderna yesterday and he feels yeah. better for me today. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go and see the next one of him too. I, I, I wanted to know what's behind these pieces because they're very interesting. Maybe I can yeah. go on it later. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is a... like a werewolf. Oh, kind of yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because I see that now and I didn't initially. <laughs> Oh, I saw it right away. I, 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 in the in the background. Okay, hold on, Ziggy. Um, let me stop the share, and I'm gonna stop the recording as well, so we can. <laughs>